Hey guys, Rod here from Movement Theory. Uh, today I want to introduce you to um, these wedges and how I utilize these wedges um, when um, sort of treating people in a movement sense, okay? Um, and this is, this is a direction that Movement Theory um, will be taking, um, probably a bit fast-tracked with um, the COVID-19 um, sort of uh, era that we're in today, um, when a lot of people are sort of moving to some more hands-off type therapy. Um, it allows us to understand the body in a pure movement space um, and the way that we use these wedges, um, I'll be able to tell you on, on how I utilize them. So these wedges basically um, get placed on the foot in different positions based on the limitations that the person might have, okay? So we apply these to generally more than one point of contact, it can be three, it can be two, um, but these bring the ground up to the foot, which allows the foot to essentially have contact where it needs to feel contact, okay? That can either slow up or slow down movement or bring movement to an area that we might need. So someone who isn't able to get weight into the base of their first metatarsal, for example, we might be able to encourage the weight to be put into that spot so the foot actually contacts the ground when you're going into a pronation movement, okay? so. We're going to utilize a few different videos showcasing some exercises that we've been doing at the clinic here um, and I'll just give you a bit of a rundown on how the wedges are used, where to put the wedges, um, how far to put the wedges in the foot um, and the utilization of a slider to get some movement happening um, with the other leg and adding load to the leg that's actually wedged up. So what we're doing here is using the wedges, we wanna make sure that um, our client has three points of contact with the ground. So we'll firstly wedge up the base of the first metatarsal. And this varies from client to client. So it's about finding that sweet spot uh, where you'll find three points of contact. We'll come over and wedge up the base of the fifth metatarsal. And we'll also wedge up the heel. This just allows for three points of contact to be on the ground. Then we bring in the slider. So we use the slider on the front here, okay? And the first quadrant that we're gonna be doing is just the 12 to 3 p.m., okay? So we, we imagine that we have a clock face in front of us, and we're gonna be utilizing the clock face to do some movement, okay? Loading up different parts of the leg. So between 12 to 3, we're gonna load up the quads, from three to six, we'll load up the adductors, and from six to nine, we'll get the glutes involved, okay? So just starting off, we'll just do one repetition at each clock face. So slightly bending your left leg, and then sliding out. Good, and then going to one o'clock, then two o'clock, and then three o'clock. So the key here is to focus on not gripping in with your toes and just allowing your body to sense those three points of contact, which is the base of the first metatarsal, the base of the fifth metatarsal, and the heel. We can also use the arms in front of us as counterbalance. Awesome. And then what we want to do is just come back the same way we came. This is really hitting everything, all muscles in three dimensions. Okay, because movement is in three dimensions. You also notice that you don't actually have to add much weight because we've got the setup done really well where the base of all points of the tripod are in contact with the ground. We've got no compensatory movement happening because we're not gripping in with our toes and the whole system is aligned really well. Awesome. All right guys, now that we've worked out where we need to place our wedges on those three points of contact of the tripod, 
so the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe and the heel, we can now work on specific phases of the gait cycle. And today we're working on suspension phase. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna really focus on the setup. So having our feet together to start off with and then taking a step back and we want to focus on the back leg remaining nice and rigid. So knee extension up on two points of contact and propelling ourselves forward whilst bending our knee at the front and maintaining those three points of contact. And what we'll find is some great movement happens in that front foot and that is a true pronation movement. So true pronation occurs when the body is set up in its most mechanically efficient way. And the foot actually lengthens and all the joints on the bottom of the foot open up, 33 of them. So 33 joints in the foot. So as you can see there, there's some nice action happening at the foot and we should get some nice activation of the, the front quadriceps as well. Also keeping in mind not to grip our toes into the ground. Okay, because that's a compensatory movement strategy. So we want to aim for maybe five repetitions of good setup. The other cue from the upper body that we want to consider is eyes on the horizon and keeping an upright posture not forcing an upright posture, but just maintaining an upright posture. We don't want to be overworking our lower back muscles, but we do want to maintain an upright posture. Awesome. All right, guys, that's all for today. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about um, the wedges, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, also, if you don't have a set of wedges at home, uh, you can also utilize a rolled up tea towel um, or something small that can actually bring the contact of the ground up to the foot. Um, I will be having um, wedges for purchase on my website, so be sure to head over to www.movementtheory.com.au. Um, we look forward to bringing you more of these educational videos um, in the near, not too distant future. Awesome guys, thank you.